Oi, gente, tudo bem? Estamos continuando com uma websérie incrível com o Dr. Gabriel Cousins. E mais uma vez, se você quiser saber um pouco mais sobre o Dr. Cousins, eu gravei uma série chamada Os Iluminados e ali, eu, e ali eu conto bastante sobre a história dele. O nosso tema de hoje é uma pergunta que me fazem sempre, porque nos fundamentos para a expansão da consciência, a gente tem lá no primeiro fundamento manter uma dieta 100% vegana, orgânica, de preferência 80% com alimentos vivos, não é? Bom, e aí a pergunta que eu recebo muito é, e a proteína da carne? Como é que a gente substitui isso? Como é que a gente faz com a história da proteína? Então eu pedi para o Dr. Cousins, que além de ser um professor espiritual e tudo mais que ele é, ele é especialista em nutrição. Eu mesma fiz um mestrado com ele nessa área. Ele é especialista em nutrição viva, vegana, com o propósito de expansão da consciência e vai responder agora para a gente sobre o mito da proteína. Vamos lá? I welcome you with love. The protein question is an extremely common question in people in the vegan and in really life food world. And it's an important one to address. The Journal of Clinical Nutrition says that vegans, vegetarians actually get twice the amount of protein they need. So the real question is, what is the optimum amount of protein that we need And what are the best sources of protein? There is a pathway for longevity and anti-cancer called the mTOR pathway. And it shows that people need between 35 and 70 grams of protein for optimum longevity. Now, the second thing we, we do when we really look at that question of optimum need is, well, how many people need a lower protein? How many people need a higher protein? The research shows about 70% of the population needs closer to 70 grams. And about 30% of the population needs closer to uh, 35 grams. So that's a, a perspective. In other words, we vary as human beings. There is a chromosome called chromosome 19 that actually tells us in our gene sequence whether we need uh, higher or lower protein, how much fat we need, and also how much carbohydrate we need. So this is actually a scientific question. And our work Uh, is really sorting out whether a person needs a 35 grams of protein or 70 grams of protein. And we will be addressing it in our future seminar because it's such an important question. In the meantime, just knowing that vegan and vegetarians really do get adequate protein and the real issue is getting too much protein. We have very, very excellent sources of vegan protein, uh, nuts and seeds, for example. And we know that people who have, have just occasionally nuts and seeds live about 70% longer. People who are having uh, nuts and seeds once a week live about 11% longer. And if they're having it two to four times a week, nuts and seeds in their diet, they're living about 13% longer. And if you're having nuts and seeds every day, which I do, and which I really do recommend, we increase lifespan by about 20%. That's very significant. So we have adequate sources. Now, other adequate sources are the green concentrates, spirulina, chlorella, blue green algae, are extremely excellent sources. Their protein content is between 60 and 70 grams. That's really important. More important, the assimilation rate. 
and the assimilation rate is between 90 and 95 percent assimilated. Now contrast that to meat, fish, chicken, okay, and here's what we see. Uh, beef is about 26 percent protein. Chicken <coughs> is about 23 percent protein. Fish is between 15 and 20 percent protein. Now, so it's not as high as these high quality vegan proteins. And in addition, we're not talking 90 to 95 percent absorption like we are talking about with spirulina, chlorella, and blue green algae. We're talking about meat, fish, and chicken, 16, 17, and 18 percent absorption. So we really are getting a much highly, higher quality protein. And we look at leafy greens, in spinach is 49% protein. Now, the little trick to that is, is the volume is, you have to eat a lot of spinach to do that. Kale is, is about 45% protein. But again, you'd have to eat a lot. So we're, we're really gonna say concentrated protein to make sure the discussion makes sense. Meat is a concentrated protein, meat, fish, and chicken are concentrated protein, and indeed spirulina, chlorella, blue-green algae, and nuts and seeds are concentrated protein. So we've got the idea of, of uh, protein amount. Now what about the quality of protein? Is there a difference between flesh-based protein and plant-based protein? And indeed there really is. What we find is that uh, flesh-based protein, meat, fish, and chicken, actually increase insulin resistance, whereas plant-based protein decreases insulin resistance. That's pretty important. And in fact, we know that flesh-based protein increases the uh, rate of diabetes 35 to 50 percent as compared to plant-based protein. That's pretty important. Now there are other things that happen with meat-based protein. It's very high in leucine and methionine. Well, leucine and methionine actually disrupt the mTOR pathway. That's what I mentioned at the beginning, which is the longevity and anti-cancer pathway. So they actually disrupt that and interfere with uh, longevity. That's a very important thing. What we find, and this is particularly important in terms of diabetes, is that meat-based protein is higher in estrogen. And what we find in terms of diabetes is higher estrogen actually increases the rate of diabetes. Now we go a little further with it, and, and we see that um, according to the uh, agencies in the United States, we're really looking at pesticides and herbicides being 95 to 97 percent concentrated in higher up in the food chain, meat, fish, chicken, and, dairy, and really dairy. So the lower we eat in the food chain, the lower our exposure to pesticides and herbicides. And children who are eating organic, vegan, or just organic, actually have one sixth to one quarter of the amount of pesticides and herbicides. So by eating lower on the food chain, we are exposed to a whole lot less toxins. 95 to 97% is a high amount of toxins. So these are some of the, the things to really consider when we talk about protein. Now we also find that animal fat not plant fat, but animal fat, which comes along with your flesh foods, actually destroys the beta cells of the pancreas, which make insulin. Research shows that uh, people who have two helpings of fish a week have a distinct drop in their insulin production, which then predisposes them to diabetes. So the list can get very long in terms of the issues. 
but we are talking about quality of protein and a plant-based protein is significantly more healthy for you and it's easier to really get the highest quality protein particularly minus pesticides herbicides because we're eating lower on the food chain so that whole worry about protein really isn't a worry we can easily get enough protein on a plant-based diet there really is no problem with it and with that understanding I, I bless you that you're able to feel at ease with this and know yes indeed you can get enough protein I'm in e aí, pessoal, como que é isso para você? Lembrando que você aí que ainda não está direitinho nessa alimentação do futuro, você ainda que não levou a paz para o seu alimento e para a sua mente também não consumindo os produtos animais, eu vou te falar uma coisa, não se desespere. O Dr. Cousins é um especialista nesse assunto e traz uma quantidade muito grande de dados a esse respeito, dados científicos mesmo e também fala do ponto de vista espiritual de tudo isso mas se você ainda não chegou lá não se desespere lembre-se que a gente dá um passo por vez no nosso caminho então pensa em tirar a carne um dia da sua semana depois dois dias depois acrescentar a espirulina né, na sua alimentação e ver como você se sente acrescentar mais as folhas verde escura que ele mencionou as castanhas, as sementes e observa o que acontece com você e nessa observação não é apenas no seu corpo mas também como a sua cabeça passa a funcionar diferente e deixa aqui o seu comentário para eu saber como é que está sendo para você peço então se você ainda não é assinante do nosso canal, que assine o nosso canal, acione o sininho de notificação e fique de olho nos nossos eventos presenciais, porque eu trago o Dr. Gabriel Cousins aqui em eventos presenciais todos os anos. Dá uma olhadinha lá no website. Um beijo!